A sigma covalent bonds are overlap of atomic orbitals between the nuclei and you can also refer to it as head-on or end-on overlap. For example, when hydrogens share electrons with each other, these two electrons between the nuclei are referred to as sigma covalent bond. Now remember hydrogen has s orbital, which is spherical, and they only have one electron in that. So if this is s orbital of one hydrogen and is, this is the other one, this area between the nuclei is referred to as a sigma bond. You could also have a hydrogen and fluorine sharing electrons and hydrogen has a s orbital now fluorine has a 2p sub z electron available and they can share it so between a p and s orbital there is also possibility of a sigma bond sigma covalent if we put two fluorines next to each other and if they share electrons the shared electrons is also a sigma between p of one fluorine and p orbital of the other fluorine and this area is so p and p head on there are many other possible combinations you could also have hybridized version of head on overlap to define pi uh, if you have a double bond you have one pi one sigma if you have triple you have two pi one sigma but pi is overlap above or below uh, the line joining the nuclei. You can also refer to it as sideway overlap. So if we put p of one orbital in this fashion, uh, sorry, one element and the p of the other element, this area above or this area below is known as pi bond. Now if I give you a picture of ethene, which you have a double bond, and then single bond attached to hydrogens. Now each of the single bonds are sigma. One of the carbon single is sigma and the other one is referred to as pi. If I try to give you a picture of that, now remember carbon in this case is 1, 2, 3, sp3 hybridized and it's, sorry, sp2 hybridized and it's trigonal planar so you have something of this notion this is your sp2 hybridized version of it now if i put my next carbon next to it and then if i put my hydrogens These are all head-on overlap. These are all sigma. Sigma, sigma. So you have one, two, three, four, five sigmas. In order for me to show you pi, I'll, I'll try my best. So you have a p orbital 90 degrees to your sp3 hybridized, which is unhybridized. And they are sharing above the nuclei and below the nuclei you can find your two electrons up here or below there and this is referred to as pi so that's how sort of you can have that picture in mind and i'm going to make this area a little bit shaded and say that's where the pi electrons could be found now a few things happens if you have a double bond it's shorter than a single bond so we have to appreciate that and remember it for sake of multiple choice uh, so what i want you to remember is short bonds are strong bonds meaning triple bond is the shortest and strongest in terms of bond enthalpy how much energy you need to break it now versus a single bond which is longest and weakest now for for example for a case of c2h6 when you do lewis start structure you have all sigma bonds the carbon-carbon sigma bond, I'm giving you the bond length, which is 0.154 nanometers, and the bond enthalpy or energy is 347 kilojoules per mole. Now, if you have a thin, which is C2H4, you would have a double bond, which one of them is pi, one is sigma. Since you are sharing now four electrons, uh, the two nuclei get closer to each other. You see the bond length gets smaller, 
0.134 rather than 0.154 and the bond enthalpy or energy increases it becomes 612 compared to the single 347 kilojoules per mole now if you have triple bond going then you would have a sigma the center line could be a sigma and then the two lines one pi up here another pi up here now you're sharing six electrons between the nuclei of carbons. The bond length gets smallest, 0.12 nanometers, and the bond strength is the most, 838 kilojoules per mole. So remember, triple bonds in covalent compounds are the strongest and shortest. Single bonds are the longest and weakest. Double bond is in between single and triple in terms of quality of length and strength.